Welcome back. I am DDP and I am feeling dangerous. Now we have some some stars talk to go through here. It's been a minute. I know since the last time for the podcast I did an episode, we already had game five played as well. The Stars won two games in a row in the series. That's all you needed to know. They came into today with a 3-2 lead with a chance to close out the series in game six at home. Now, here's here's where this is important, right? St. Louis is phenomenal on the road this postseason. In fact, their only loss this postseason on the road came in game four in Dallas. I had to think about that. They got the first one. They got a little bit of a controversial goal at the end of Game 3 that helped them survive an onslaught from the Stars, and they get away with a 4-3 win in that one. The Dallas Stars have a great goaltender in Ben Bishop, but there are issues that need to be addressed. We can't just put everything aside and act like it's all rainbows and butterflies on that front. There are issues, and one of those key issues for the Stars all postseason has been they give up early goals like nobody's business. They will give up a one-goal lead to start the game almost without fail in the first four minutes. Today, they do so in 63 seconds. And from the jump of the game, I thought, wow, they're coming out pretty flat. Like, I really hope they can put something together. And, oh, shit, they're down. Okay. All right, well, there's that. Now let's see what they can do. They're going to have to dig out of this hole. And they eventually do, before the first period ends, they get on the board, tie it up at one all. But my problem is that first goal, just Bishop never sees it. It's a deep shot. They have enough interference right there in front that they're able to basically block Ben Bishop's vision. Uh, He gives up the goal. But, you know, it's okay. The Stars, after one, are tied at one. So it's like, well, you don't want to give up easy goals to them. But, you know, at least you're back to even. And... Tyler Sagan gets the goal on the power play for the Stars, but it's just not its not as great of a feeling as it should be at that stage. Kind of like last series in Game 6, uh, in that case Nashville, this time the Blues. The Blues were desperate. They were playing for their season, and you know the Stars had gained all that momentum winning two straight games, including in St. Louis, beating them down to the point where the Blues' own fans were vocally booing them after the second period, it felt like this was a real opportunity for the Stars to just end it. And yet they came out flat. They gave up the easy goal early. I don't want to say easy goal. I mean, especially who am I, a non-professional athlete, to call it an easy goal. They gave up the early goal based on some sloppy play. And where this game turned, yes, the Blues get a goal then in the late second period. And we go into the third period with the Stars down one. But... They showed in Game 3, even if they're down one in the third period, they can put some goals together. They scored twice in that game, you know, and because their defense can't hold up, they lose 4-3. But you looked at it all and you felt like, okay, they they can do something here. One goal is not ideal, but it's certainly not the end of the world. And then the entire series, perhaps, shifted. With roughly 12 and a half minutes left in the third period, the Stars are down one, and the Blues get, i, I forgive me on the name, I forget the guy's name, uh, they basically slap the shit out of the puck. Just a bullet, like a sniper's bullet, flies in and hits Ben Bishop right on the left collarbone. Ben Bishop goes down as if he's just been shot. Like, he is in agony. If your, your visual is basically, imagine if Ben Bishop, if you had an x-ray machine over his shoulder at that point, it pretty much would be crumbled to dust or at least snapped like twig, you know, four or five different places. He goes down, like, doesn't just go down, like, throws the throws his stick and goes down on the flat of his back and he is writhing in pain. So much so, so much legitimate pain. As I understand this, if he had taken off his helmet... If he'd had the wherewithal to take off his helmet, the play's blown dead. But even still, it's a judgment call for the official to blow that play dead. Now, the puck rebounds off his collarbone, and it lands about five or six feet away. It's kicked back out to point. 
That guy then takes another shot, and it's deflected in in midair by another Blues guy right there, right where Bishop would have been standing. It's a great play by the Blues to capitalize, and it's like, it's not really to me bang bang, because to me bang bang is if it's a deflection at the goal and doesn't kick back out to the point for then a new slap shot to take place that's then deflected in. That That's kind of how I feel about it, but... Man, that changes the entire dynamic of the game because now the Stars, I mean, it's bad enough that Bishop is down like this. Now, he stayed in the game after several minutes of talking to trainers and getting his shoulder looked at. We come to find that is a huge mistake as well, but he stays in the game and like 33 seconds later gives up another goal. And it's another bad play by the Stars, just a sloppy turnover uh, in open ice by the Stars, and you get a one-man break, one-on-one with the goalie. Ben Bishop, man, he is not in the right frame of mind at that point. You know, you assume he's nursing an injury, and suddenly he's got a one-on-one with another guy who sets up with another slap shot. Credit to that Blues player, by the way. I know it was his first career playoff goal. Credit to him, because he knew the exact kind of thing Ben Bishop wanted nothing to do with. He's like, you know, I could try and finesse it around him, but if I slap the shit out of this on him... After that last shot he took, there's no way he's going to be willing to throw himself in front of it with the same intensity and willingness as before and just slaps it right by him. And in the blink of an eye, a 2-1 game is 4-1. It's officially an ass-kicking. And the Stars finally have to pull Bishop. Bishop doesn't even go to the bench. He goes straight to the training room. The word is he's going to be ready for Game 7, but that that's what they're going to tell you no matter what. Do you think... Jim Montgomery is going to go out there in the press conference and say, yeah, uh, we're we're probably without him. No, man. He, he could have lost his arm completely, like hacked off, detached from his body, and they're going to tell you his plan is to play. You just have to see. But, man, oh, man, this series, this was a real chance for the Stars. They they came out flat. They played sloppy. And they, they did not feel like the urgent team. And whereas in Game 6... Against Nashville, I felt like they were the intense team. They understood, hey, if you give this team a chance to come back in Game 7 at their place, all bets are off, man. Like, you've got to close this out now. So the Stars played in that Game 6 with desperation and energy. And I just never felt it here, man. They were sloppy. They had chances. Now, you can say, you know, we talked about the controversial goal. You can say that the Stars had their chances and all of that. They did. The Stars could have had three goals in this game. They missed. They whiffed on a couple gorgeous opportunities where all you got to do is just knock it through on a perfect pass goalie out of position for St. Louis Bennington. And they just couldn't get it done. And that's a real shame because you knew they were missing like vital opportunities. And then when you set up and you see how the rest of that plays out with the Bishop thing and then the immediate follow-up goal... Now, you're going not just back to St. Louis for Game 7, having to win for the third time this series on the road. Now, granted, St. Louis is phenomenal on the road this postseason, not so great at home. The Stars have kind of followed that same trajectory, but it just feels like they have all momentum now because even though the Stars had won two in a row, St. Louis didn't just didn't just survive. They kicked the teeth in for the Stars. Stars had 12 and a half minutes after the goalie switch. You know they had to get more aggressive, but all the piss and vinegar just seemed like it was out of the stars at that point. And they lose 4-1. And now you have some serious questions. Is Bishop going to be 100% in this Game 7? Do the stars have the energy and the vigor to fight on? They are going against the Stanley Cup favorite, St. Louis Blue. So this is by no means a done deal. This is This was always going to have to be an upset for them to win. And it feels like they squandered a crucial, crucial opportunity. And I don't know what to think about this now. This series feels like it is completely turned. And man, this could be be a moment the Stars look back on and regret. Not not the Bishop thing. That happens. I mean, yeah, the, the officials call sucked. I don't think the officiating has been particularly great all series. Let me let me get the notes here. Uh, Bob Sturm of the Ticket had a good comment on all this. I wanted to reiterate that. So when the play happened with Bishop, 
Uh, Sturm gives his reaction, of course, on Twitter. He used to do TV work for the Stars a couple years ago. Uh, people cite the rule, and they talk about how if the Stars had just secured the puck, the play would have been blown dead. That's true, but the official has a judgment call at any point that they can blow the play dead. Even if the puck is in midair as it was off the deflection, there's the opportunity. Stern points out, he, he being Bishop, is lying motionless. That has to be blown dead. Helmet stayed on so it becomes judgment. It's a judgment call that the ref botched and made no attempt to fix. Uh, he follows that up then because, of course, as I cited earlier, there's people saying, hey, it's a judgment call if the stars are just secured, blah, 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 that's the rule. Sturm reiterates again, again, a bang-bang play is one thing. The puck was recycled to the point. I believe the judgment call was botched. I reserve the right to be wrong, but that's how I saw it. Uh, per NHL Rule 8.1, in the case where it is obvious that a player has sustained a serious injury, the referee and or linesman may stop the play immediately. Essentially, it's the discretion of the ice officials, and that call was not made. Now, I forget who it was. There was some somewhat prominent former, he's now retired, an NHL referee on Twitter chimed in on this because, of course, they did. it's a playoffs and it's a controversial goal. And as he says it, yes, it is a judgment call, but in his assessment, it was a badly missed judgment call. Like I said, the slap shot hits bishop he goes down like he just got shot by a sniper's bullet and he's not getting up so for that to happen and then you recycle the puck to point for another shot while he's clearly down his stick is 27 feet over there it's obvious what's going to happen it's obvious he's injured i know there are people saying like well how do you know he's not faking an injury first of all what benefit does he have to just drop like a sack of rocks when he's hit if he's faking it why is he getting out of position it's not like it was an illegal shot. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like another Blues player came by and clipped him and he's trying to sell that for the sake of getting out of that situation. It's not a flop. It's not a fake. The fact that his helmet stayed on only further proves that it's not a fake injury in this case. I don't know how he convinced the Stars trainer to let him stay in the game. But, man, that that whole... The whole game turned on that and it might be the whole series so we'll see what the stars can do game seven is tuesday night in st louis they're gonna have to try and win for a third time in st louis now this postseason and you know the stars are trying to return to the western conference finals for the first time in 11 years so there's a lot on the line here and i really hope they didn't let this get away from them because opportunities like this don't come very often